Hey guys, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to really control your instances within NVIDIA Omniverse Create. You might be used to using the paint extension where you can use the brush tool in order to paint on geometry. But what I found is when you're doing a really large area and you need to precisely control exactly where your instance nodes are going, I had to find another technique. So for this project, I had an agricultural client who wanted to showcase the various growth phases of wheat. And the geometry that I was using was actually really high res. So when I went to go flood the geometry with this high poly count node, it was actually crashing my scene. So instead, what I found a workaround was, is to use cubes. And those cubes represent the rough volume of the high poly geometry. And it's actually really quick to instance large amounts of those cubes. And then after we can go into the USD node properties and switch it into the high poly asset. You can see here that just using traditional painting methods, I painted in the grass, the bush line, and the trees. But if you want to do a really large area, and you want to do things like, for instance, up here where I have these tractor lines, that's really hard to do, and it's going to take you forever if you try and do it manually by hand. So what I did in 3ds Max is I built these booleaned pieces of geometry, which precisely show where the rows of wheat are going to be, and where my tractor lines are going to go because I don't actually want any geometry being generated there. What's nice about this method is that it's really easy to create revisions. In this case, for this project, there was a lot of changes that had to go into changing the spaces of the rows, into changing the placement of the tractor lines, etc. And so had I manually painted in those pieces of geometry, it actually would have been a ton of extra work to have to go and constantly make those changes over and over. So in our paint extension, Let's go ahead and put that placeholder geometry, i.e. the cube, into our asset holder here. And just showing you what I did here, I literally just created a cube, scaled it down to the rough proportions of what I wanted my high-res geometry to be, and then I just added that asset into the paint extension. So let's use the one I already created here and go to Add Asset. Now, the only things I played around with in the paint extension are the size and the density. And then I changed the scale to one because I want it to match the same scale I had before. Now, I know I use the density of 300 and I used a size of 110, but you can simply experiment by changing these parameters and then just painting within your scene. So if I, for instance, select my initial mask layer here and then select paint, you can see that that's going to be roughly the density that we're going to be generating. So let's blow that away. And rather than painting it in manually, let's select flood. Now it's going to give you a warning here about generating large amounts of geometry, but that's okay. It's going to take a few minutes to generate. So now in the scene here, because it's low poly, it generates much faster. Our scene didn't crash and we get a much better approximation of exactly what's going to happen. And what you're going to see in a moment here is that I'm going to replace all of these cubes with our high-res geometry. And this is just so cool to fly around and see just how fast you can iterate on these things. That's one of the beautiful things about NVIDIA Omniverse and its power of real-time rendering. So let's go down to the point instance and I'm gonna go down into the raw USD properties. Now let's go to the prototype bar here and let's delete those cubes. And all I'm going to do is select Add Target and now select our high res geometry node. In this case, I've already imported it. And there you go. So you can see that now we have all of these really high res instance nodes of wheat. And because they're animated, I can actually scrub through my timeline and actually see that animation happening. You can use anything though. So if I just create a cylinder here and I just scale it to the rough proportions that we want, I can then go back into those raw USD properties and I can change it if I want to update my high res geometry to something else. So I don't have to go and repaint that in the scene. So it's very quick to iterate or change designs as needed. So let's delete that here and let's add in the new target of the cylinder. And there you go. So now you can see that our scene is instantly updated exactly where we want all of those instances to generate. Let's go ahead and switch it back to the high poly asset of the wheat model. And I just want to show you really quickly how when we scrub through the timeline now, 
you can actually see that animation being triggered and played back on all of our instances. So zooming all the way back here, we can see the entire wheat field. And between the trees and the grass and all of the high poly assets for the wheat, there are literally billions and billions of polygons being rendered right now in real time. So there's a lot you can do with something like that. And there's no reason why you can't layer multiple variations in the wheat. For instance, if you were to offset your animations or add a bit more variety in the wind animation, you could layer those different pieces all together in your wheat field in order to add more realism. And you can add additional layers if you wanted to add small rocks or other imperfections in order to really bring your scene to life. So one of the things you might be asking is how do you actually grow a plant in 3D? And there's a ton of options. What I did as the simplest method is in 3ds Max, I built five different models. So what I did is I looked up some reference online and I just roughly modeled in the different phases of the plant as it ages. I then went ahead and used a morpher modifier. Within the morpher modifier, you can switch between different states of model, as long as the polygons all stay the same. So because I started with the tallest version of the plant and worked my way backwards, each versions of these plants have the exact same polygonal count. And that's really important. From there, you can add it to each of the channels and you can simply transition between each of the phases using keyframes. Then on top, I simply added a bend modifier and I animated the gizmo in order to add some of that wind sway. And it's just a nice way to work non-destructively so you can have lots of variety. And you can also easily change things, which is nice. So jumping back into NVIDIA Omniverse Create, this is where the fun really begins. Now that the scene is set up, and due to the nature of real-time rendering, it's really fast to just jump around, set up your camera angles, play around with the lighting, and find the scene that you want. So I found something I'm happy with, and all I did is I went to the Rendering Movie Capture tab, and from there you can set your resolution, you can set the amount of samples that you want, and then you simply just set your output path. So I encourage you to think about how you can use this technique within your scenes. It's a great way to add detail within your animations in a controlled and non-destructive way. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you next time.